This video is about how to check a website for accessibility without using tools and software. Every linked website in a course has to be accessible to all users, even if they're just optional resources. This means the websites have to follow the same accessibility standards as the course itself. If you have a rudimentary understanding of web accessibility and you can visually scan the screen, then you can catch some of the more obvious errors on your own. For example, one of the first things observed upon entering this website is the flashing or blinking objects that cannot be turned off. If you see a blinking animation that cannot be turned off, then you know the website is not accessible. This is a major concern because fast animations can cause epileptic seizures or headaches for some users. Contrast. Next, you notice the title of the page, which is inaccessible page. The text color is a light gray and the background color is a light green. This is not accessible because there isn't enough contrast between the background color and the text color. This can cause eye strain for most users, but it is especially difficult to read for users with visual impairments. Magnification. Some people with visual impairments rely on magnification. Make sure the website is still understandable when magnified. Each browser has the ability to increase text size through individual control menus. I'm going to zoom in on a Windows computer in Firefox by clicking the control and plus keys. Real text. Moving on to the body of the text. You'll notice the word welcome, which is an image and not text. Having text displayed through an image as opposed to actual text can cause a problem for people who rely on screen readers. Screen readers are software that verbally read what is on the screen to users with visual impairments. This software cannot tell users the information conveyed by images unless they have alternative text. To be accessible, a website should have actual text. Descriptive links. In the body of the text, there are two hyperlinks. The text for the first hyperlink is this link, and the other hyperlink has the full address displayed. Both of these links are inaccessible. The first one is inaccessible because language like click here or this link are not descriptive or unique. To be accessible, the text should describe the destination. On the other hand, you also don't want to display the full web address like in the second hyperlink because the screen reader will verbally recite the entire address to the users. Imagine having to hear every time you click on a link things like HTTP colon backslash backslash www period and you get the idea. Language. It says in the body paragraph, read the red text on the right for more information. A visually impaired person may not see the color or know where the text is located on the right side of the page. To be accessible, the creator should not use color or other visual elements when giving instructions. Complex images. Next, let's look at the image under the Title Here section. Displayed is a graph that conveys important information. Complex images that convey information should have accompanying detailed text descriptions or captions. Keyboard accessibility. Some users have difficulty using a computer mouse. For this reason, all content must be accessible and functional using the keyboard alone. This is tested by using the tab key on your keyboard to navigate through the page. To activate a button or link, use the enter or space keys. I'm tabbing through this page, but I'm not able to get to the navigation menu. If a user is not able to access all parts of a website, then it's not keyboard accessible. Multimedia. This website doesn't have any videos or podcasts, but if it did, then we would check to make sure the videos have synchronous closed captions, and the podcasts have transcripts. This website has a Flash interactive puzzle created with Adobe Captivate. To interact with this game, you have to click on a puzzle piece and drag it to the proper place on the canvas. You cannot use the keyboard to do this activity, so this puzzle is not accessible. So, as just demonstrated, 
By examining these features of a website, you can determine its accessibility and whether or not you should link to it in your course. In summary, when reviewing a website, you should check for blinking animations that cannot be turned off, low contrast between text and background colors, low readability when magnified, images of text instead of real text, non-descriptive links or full web addresses, visual elements and language when giving instructions, lack of detailed descriptions for complex images, features that are inaccessible using the keyboard, videos without captions, podcasts without transcripts, and interactive elements that are timed and require the use of a mouse.